Welcome viewers, to the next chapter in our captivating series, A Journey Through the Bible. Today, we set our sights on Exodus chapter 3, a crucial installment in the broader narrative that unfolds from Genesis to Revelation. As we embark on this exploration, we invite you to delve into the profound themes and transformative moments that shape the biblical landscape. Your support is instrumental in continuing this series, enabling us to delve deeper into the sacred scriptures. To contribute and sustain the journey, kindly click on the links provided in our channel profile. Now, let's unravel the mysteries of Exodus chapter 3 together. Exodus chapter 3 from the NIV. And this is the word of God. Verse 1. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Verse 2. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire it did not burn up. Verse 3. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. Verse 4. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses. Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Verse 5. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Verse 6. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, because he was afraid to look at God. Verse 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. Verse 8. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. Verse 9. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Verse 10. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people the Israelites out of Egypt. Verse 11. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Verse 12. And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Verse 13. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? Verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. Verse 15. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me. From generation to generation. Verse 16. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. Verse 17. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 18. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. Verse 19. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. Verse 20. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. Verse 21. 
and I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward this people, so that when you leave you will not go empty-handed. Verse 22. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters. And so you will plunder the Egyptians. This marks the end of Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3 marks a pivotal moment in the biblical narrative as it captures the encounter between Moses and the burning bush. This chapter is filled with great themes, divine revelation, and the commissioning of Moses for a monumental task. The narrative unfolds as Moses, now in Midian, tends to the flock of his father-in-law Jethro. While on Mount Horeb, he encounters a burning bush that miraculously remains unconsumed by the flames. In this extraordinary moment, God speaks to Moses, revealing himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God expresses awareness of the suffering of the Israelites in Egypt and discloses his plan to deliver them from bondage. Furthermore, God appoints Moses as the chosen leader to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses, in humility and trepidation, questions his ability to fulfill this monumental task. God reassures Moses, promising to be with him, and even reveals his divine name, I am who I am. This encounter at the burning bush marks the beginning of Moses' journey as a liberator and prophet. Key Themes 1. Divine Presence and Revelation The burning bush serves as a tangible manifestation of God's presence. The revelation of God's name, I am who I am, underscores the divine transcendence and eternal nature. 2. Divine Commissioning God selects Moses for a specific and crucial mission, to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. This theme emphasizes God's sovereignty in choosing imperfect individuals to accomplish His purposes. 3. Human Inadequacy and God's Assurance Moses expresses his self-doubt and inadequacy, a relatable human response to a daunting task. God's reassurance and promise to be with Moses highlight the divine capacity to empower and overcome human limitations. Exodus chapter 3 lays the foundation for the liberation of the Israelites and introduces Moses as the central figure in this pivotal moment of biblical history. The burning bush becomes a symbol of God's holiness and his direct involvement in human affairs. This chapter sets the stage for the unfolding drama of the Exodus, where God's power, faithfulness, and the human response to divine calling take center stage. Applications for today 1. Responding to divine calling Like Moses, individuals may face moments of uncertainty when called to fulfill a significant purpose. This chapter encourages reflection on trusting in God's guidance and provision. 2. Awareness of God's presence the burning bush serves as a reminder of God's presence in the midst of ordinary moments. Reflecting on this theme invites believers to cultivate a heightened awareness of God's continual presence in their lives. 3. Embracing Divine Sovereignty The divine commissioning of Moses underscores God's sovereignty in orchestrating events and choosing individuals for specific roles. Today, believers can find comfort in trusting God's larger plan, even when faced with daunting challenges. Exodus chapter 3 is a profound chapter that reveals the divine initiative to intervene in human history, select leaders, and deliver his people from oppression. As we contemplate the burning bush and Moses' encounter with God, may we draw inspiration for our own journeys, recognizing that God continues to call and empower individuals for his purposes. Let us bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, as we bow in reverence, we acknowledge your divine presence, much like the burning bush that captivated Moses on Mount Horeb. In the quiet moments of our lives, may we, too, become aware of your eternal I am presence, guiding, comforting, and empowering us. Lord, we resonate with Moses' humility and trepidation in the face of your calling. In moments of doubt and inadequacy, Grant us the assurance that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Like Moses, may we find courage to say yes to your commission, trusting that you equip those you call. As we reflect on the burning bush, may it serve as a symbol of your holiness within the ordinary moments of our lives. Ignite in us a renewed awareness of your presence, 
transforming our mundane circumstances into sacred encounters with you. We lift up those who, like Moses, are faced with daunting tasks, feeling inadequate for the challenges before them. Pour out your grace upon them, affirming your promise to be with them every step of the way. Lord, may the revelation of your name, I am who I am, resonate within our hearts. In our quest for identity and purpose, help us find ultimate fulfillment in you, the eternal and unchanging one. In gratitude for your divine commissioning and presence, we commit ourselves to the tasks you set before us. As we journey through the chapters of life, may your guidance illuminate our path, and may our response be one of faith and obedience. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we bring this chapter to a close, I want to extend a heartfelt invitation to you, our valued viewers. If you found inspiration and insight in our series, A Journey Through the Bible, I encourage you to consider supporting our ongoing efforts by contributing compassionately. Your generous donation can make a significant impact in sustaining and enhancing this series. To contribute, simply click on the links available on our channel profile. Your compassionate support allows us to delve deeper into the rich narrative of the Bible, uncovering valuable wisdom to share with you. Thank you for being an integral part of our community. Your compassionate generosity ensures the continuation and growth of this meaningful series. Together, let's continue this journey through the scriptures, discovering the timeless truths that enrich our lives. See you in Exodus chapter 4. Blessings.